and gentlemen, welcome to the Amityville Union Free School District Board of Education meeting, um, March 13th, 2024. So, regular monthly meetings. Present at the point in time is myself, President Lisa Johnson, first Vice President Jeanette Santos, second Vice President Carol Seaborg, Superintendent Dr. Gina Talbot, Trustee Dave Pellin, Trustee Juan Leon. Um, Trustee Lindsay Kretz will be arriving. Also present is Assistant Superintendent for Cook Instruction, Dr. Joan Lang. Assistant Superintendent for Human Resources, Dr. Bridget Waite. Assistant Superintendent for Finance and Operation, Ms. Olivia Bawatsi. Um, Consultant, Paul Frazier, as well as our District Clerk, Melissa Durney. At this point in time, also um, legal has just arrived, John Cheenick. At this point in time, and we call the meeting for it at 532. At 533, can I have a motion to go into executive session for a particular person's employment history, as well as advice from council um, providing an update with ATA negotiations? So move. Second. Jeanette Santos is first. Dave Pella is second. All those in favor? Aye. My motion carries 5 0. We will resume open roughly at 7 30 p.m. Before the Board of Education met earlier this evening for executive session for advice from council um, regarding AT update negotiations as well as particular person's employment history. At this point in time, please note the exit clearly mark. Take a moment to um, silence your cell phone. Smoking is not allowed on school grounds. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. At this point in time, I'm going to turn the meeting over to um, our superintendent, Dr. Gina Talbert. Good evening to our Board of Education, our colleagues and community. Tonight's superintendent's presentation acknowledges a very special group of student scholars who have excelled academically as well as in other areas throughout their high school experience. I had the opportunity to attend a breakfast recently hosted in their honor and throughout my one-to-one -one conversations with them, I was most impressed about their decisions, their thoughtfulness, their reflection, and the wise choices that they are considering in the next steps of the new chapter that's soon to come of their lives. So tonight, I would like to introduce and present to others our principal, Mary Stevens, from the Amityville Memorial High School. As she comes forward, she will have the honor of of introducing our top 10 student scholars for this school year, Principal Stevens. Thank you, Dr. Talbert. Good evening, President Johnson, members of the board, members of the cabinet. Tonight, I am joined by the building leadership team of the Amityville Memorial High School. Dr. Cardone, Mr. Cord, Ms. Lim and I are delighted to have the opportunity to introduce you to the top 10 graduates of the class of 2024. These scholars exemplify the culmination of years of hard work, dedication, perhaps some sleepless nights, and of course, academic excellence. To be at the top of their class signifies not just academic achievement, but also leadership, resilience, and a commitment to excellence in all aspects of their lives. They have not only excelled academically, but have also demonstrated a willingness to participate in school and community activities, inspiring their peers and leaving a lasting impact on our learning community 
and the community at large. Each of them has been shaped by the tireless efforts of their outstanding teachers. From their parents who join us tonight, their guardians and other family members who served as their first teachers. To the classroom teachers who have taught them from their earliest days in pre-K through their time at the Amityville Memorial High School. From nurturing a love of learning in their formative years to guiding them through the complexities of advanced subjects. Each of these teachers has played a pivotal role in shaping these graduates into the accomplished individuals you will meet tonight. I'd like to invite you to come forward top 10 as we call your name. Sydney Blake is ranked number 10. This year, Sydney took ceramics too. In the class, she has given herself the grace to make mistakes and has learned to focus on a centered foundation. Her ceramics teacher is very proud of the work she has done. Sydney is also a member of the Tri-M Music Honor Society. She is a drum major and a member of the jazz band. Congratulations, Sydney. Jason Chicas is ranked at number nine. His calculus teacher noted that he is among the hardest working students he has ever had the honor to teach. Jason was an active member of the AP research program and his AP literature class. Jason would like to shout out his mom and dad, his siblings and his teacher, Ms. Shulkin. Congratulations. Katia Ramos Rojas is ranked number eight. You may recognize Katia from her phenomenal performance as Aunt M in the high school's production of The Wiz, which she delivered while also maintaining her high grades. Katia would like to shout out her parents for always supporting her, her friends, and her teachers, including Ms. Shulkin, for allowing her to be vulnerable, and a person she lost who solidified the person she wants to be in the future. Congratulations, Katya. Tamaya Bullard is ranked number seven. This summer, Tamaya worked as an office assistant for the high school guidance office. The guidance team loved working with her and appreciated her work ethic and the help she provided during a busy time. She is remembered by her teachers for being her best self during COVID and helping her peers and her non-tech savvy teachers. Tamaya would like to shout out her parents. Congratulations. Kendall Chandler is ranked number six. Kendall is a member of the Triumph Music Honor Society and Jazz Band. This year, she chose to take American Sign Language. Her teacher notes that studying ASL requires time, practice, patience, and discipline. She is maintaining a 100 average in the class. I have had the pleasure of working with Kindle this year as she is a summer and after school office assistant for me. We bonded over our love for, love for label makers and Ziploc bags. <laughs> Kindle would like to shout out her grandma and her grandpa. She says it all started with grandma. She remembers tracing letters with her as a child. Congratulations, Kindle. Taylor Rollins. Taylor, come on over. She is ranked number five. Taylor's math teacher noted that she is an amazingly driven individual who will absolutely excel in whatever she does in the future. 
She is a model citizen and a model student, a role model for the entire student body. Taylor would like to shout out her mom, her dad, and her grandma. Congratulations, Taylor. Kazima Muakil is ranked number four. She is the president of the AMHS Chorus. She has been a critical force for the Amityville Echo newspaper. She has been an incredible advocate for the Echo, starting as a features reporter and rising to the rank of managing editor. She will be incredibly missed next year. Congratulations, Kazima. Madeline Shingleton is ranked. Madeline is ranked number three. She is Triumph president a member of the Chamber Orchestra, is an eight-time Long Island String Festival participant, eight-time all-county participant, and two-time all-state alternate. She has been featured in Newsday for the Merit Award in Music from the Long Island Arts Alliance. Like Kindle, she has chosen to take American Sign Language and has also maintained a 100 average in the class. Classes are held in American Sign Language, requiring students to pay attention to using a different sense, their eyes, something they are not used to. Congratulations, Madeline. Amin Shah. Amin is ranked number two with a weighted average of 110.87 and is your salutatorian. Like Kazima, he has been a critical force for the Amityville Echo newspaper. Amin started his journey with Mr. Katsagiorgis as part of the middle school's newspaper and has grown from reporter to our current editor in chief. He also will be incredibly missed by the ECHO team. Amin would like to shout out his parents, his teachers, Ms. Keenan, Mr. Rochester, his counselor, Ms. Noon, and all the teachers and supporters from Northwest through the high school who have led him to this moment. Congratulations, Amin. Amin and now ranked at number one, with a weighted average of 111.88. Your valedictorian, Margaret Catron. Margaret is the Trium Vice President and is a member of the Chamber Orchestra. This fall of the 159 female senior student athletes who had a 90 plus unweighted average and played soccer in Suffolk County, Margaret was ranked third. She was one of 12 to be recognized by the Suffolk County Girls Soccer Coaches Association's academic all county team. Margaret would like to shout out her parents, her brother, and her counselor, Ms. Holland, and teacher, Ms. Ferranti. Congratulations, Margaret. We are all so proud of all of you. And so I invite the audience to please please join me in a round of applause for this amazing group of young adults.
we're going to invite the Board of Ed to join our top 10 scholars for a group photo along with the high school administration. Congratulations once again to our top 10 student scholars of the Amityville Memorial High School. Thank you. We remain extremely proud of you. And if you have parents, relatives, and or teachers or staff members, if any of you have impacted their lives, we invite you to stand. Mom, dad, aunt, uncles, grandmas, teachers, neighbors. Thank you so very much for being a part of their village. Thank you to our scholars. You may return to your seats at this time. Let's not stop. Let's continue to clap until they have their seats. Once again on this evening, we are going to continue with the budget review line by line for the 24-25 budget. As we delve into the intricacies of our budget plan for the upcoming fiscal year, it is crucial to address the challenges we are currently facing. With an increase of 6.87% in our budget, we find ourselves at a pivotal juncture. Our primary objective remains twofold, to explore avenues for reducing this increase, and if necessary, to seek the community's support in honoring a tax levy increase. Since the auditor's report of June 2023, the district has implemented robust internal controls within operating departments, checks and balances. We have been diligently monitoring expenditures on an ongoing basis. Our commitment to fiscal responsibility stems from our desire to be accountable to our taxpayers while ensuring the highest quality education for our student scholars. Over the past three years, we have been fortunate to receive over $11 million in grant funds. However, it is important to note that these grants are expiring this year or have expired. Consequently, our general fund budget 
cannot absorb most of these positions or expenditures that have been funded by these grants. This reality underscores the need for careful consideration and strategic planning as we navigate this transitional period. We continue our comprehensive line-by-line -line review of our budget with the Board of Education tonight. Your insights, feedback, and questions are invaluable as we strive to develop a budget plan that is both fiscally responsible and reflective of our commitment to delivering exceptional education to our student scholars. Your engagement is pivotal as we work collaboratively to chart the course forward for our district. I want to say I am grateful and thankful to those of you who have reached out to me via email and or phone call to express your interest in being a part of our soon coming community gatherings where we can learn from you answer questions, and have thought exchange about what matters most to us, and that's the education of our student scholars. Together, I am confident that we will navigate these challenges and emerge stronger as a district. Without further ado, I call our Assistant Superintendent for Business, Ms. Olivia Buazzi, who will facilitate our budget review at this time. Thank you. Can you all hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, can you just leave the mic close to you, please? Correct. OK, thank you. So we're go going to continue the line by line budget discussions. And this time we are going to put together the, we're going to put the budget together in groups so that it's easier because regular instruction, which covers the salaries of most of our teachers make up about more than 25% of the budget. And when we get to the other session, which covers special education also, you see that that also makes up more than 15% of the budget. So together, they make up more than 40% of the budget. If you want to follow along, the page numbers are right here on the screen in the third column. Total teachers' salaries for regular instruction is $23 million, $873,316. And that number includes all the adjustments that we have made so far regarding the positions that have been eliminated. So the difference of $986,000 that you see on the screen is a combination of the positions that were cut, the positions that were cut in the grant, as well as the some positions that were in the grant and were brought into general fund. The other salaries covers the salary of our aides, monitors, as well as all other compensation, including home instruction. Then the next slide covers the cost of payment to charter schools. We've looked at the enrollment. Last time I talked about how many students are enrolled in charter schools, and I, I told you it's been increasing over time. So this year, if you look at that page, page 33, you would see that there was an adjustment made to accommodate 
any future increases because we're looking at the trend over time. And because of that, we made that adjustment. So we are expecting that the charter school payments, which is a bill that is sent to the business office on a current basis, is going to go up by about $531,000. And this is one of the major drivers that we have been talking about. Then we have equipment, supplies, contractor services, and BOCI services going up by 4.2%. So is there any question on the regular education section of the budget, which covers pages 23 through 35? Does any board members have any questions for Ms. Tawasi? No, not at this point, because these are open cuts. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to jump to special education. And that also, we try to summarize the cost to make it easier. And the special education section of the budget, for those of you who are following the line by line budget presentation is on page 36 through pages, page 39. And as you can see here, the teachers, special education teacher salary in 23-24 was about $5.7 million. That is going up to 6.4. And as I indicated, when I talked about the regular ed, this also include any position that was eliminated last week. Any teaching position that was eliminated last, last week. Other salaries includes our TAs, our one-to-one -one aids, and any home instruction that is reflected in the budget that you have in your hands. Then we have equipment costs, but I wanted to draw everybody's attention to one of the main drivers that we have been talking about, tuition cost. This is the tuition expenses for students that have been placed outside the district and in BOCES program. As you can see, the sum of the two is about $2.8 million. And we go kid by kid, try to identify the program that the kids are in and budget accordingly. Any question on the special education section of the budget? Uh, no, just for clarification. So as individuals are reading um, the line-by-line -line budgets, if there's anything that's in parentheses, that's the items that have already been deducted, correct? When they're looking at the line-by-line. -line. No. No, when you, when you go back to the line-by-line. -line, yes. When in, in the column it says increase or decrease. Correct. Someone knows it is a... A decrease because we reviewed it. But it's it's what's in the parentheses. That yes, okay. yes, we reviewed it and we cut some of those items already. Cabinet reviewed it. And as I said last week, uh, we eliminated about $1.4 million, $1.1 million of, from the budget already. Any questions on special education? No. So these are the line by lines in the special education budget. And the special education code is 2250. So follow along and you can see how all these numbers were pulled together. And when we look at anything that is BOCES, that's aidable? But, yes. But we don't we get it back the following, the following year, year. But it's only percentage of... It is the percentage, the district percentage. Every school district has its own criteria based on a combination of factors, including the wealth index. And the higher the wealth index, the lower 
the state aid. So we get for tuition, we get about 86% on each child, minus certain deduction. If the kid is placed in a residential facility, we do get aided on the tuition part of the kid's expense. But any maintenance cost, which is split between the school district and the county, is not aided. Pages 40 to 56, this is other instruction, and this include occupational education, summer school, library technology, audiovisual, attendance, guidance, psychology, social workers, and co-curricular activities. Again, if you go line by line, you look at occupational education. Last year, the number of students that were enrolled in career education was about 151. We anticipate that number to increase by one next year. And we get the number, this number from BOCES. BOCES build the school district on what is called a rolling average. Every number, November, they give us a number of students that they anticipate will attend BOCES the subsequent year. And that is the number that is used to build the district. So even if a kid drops out, we still have to pay that cost. So if I'm understanding you correctly, you're say, stating that, for example, if in November of 2023, hypothetically, there were 151 kids that were enrolled in, in BOCES. So what BOCES will say is that for the next year, for for 24-25, we are going to bill you for 152 students for the year school year 24-25. But if we only enroll 130 students into BOCES, we still have to pay BOCES 152 for 152 students. You're absolutely correct. And the reason why they do that is that they, just like us, have to put plans in place to educate the kids. So if you have a teacher in place and there are nine students enrolled and one drops out, you still have to pay the teacher the full pay. So that's why they use the rolling average. It is fair to them, it is fair to the system. Excuse me, Ms. Bawatsi. Sure. Can I ask you a question to piggyback on that regarding BOCES? So during during our uh, first uh, budget presentation, you provided us with some of the major drivers and areas where this budget exceeded, I'm sorry, the, the line items that exceeded the budget. One of those line items was occupational education at BOCES. Yes. Uh, we, we went over $268,000. Can, can you offer some insight as to how that ha happened? Yes. In the 22-23 school year, that's what you're talking about. That was the analysis that came up with the $268,000. We budgeted for 117 students, but the rolling average was 139. That dealt was the one that that's delta is the amount that the number that generated the differential of two hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars. So it was because of the rolling average. At that time, we budgeted one hundred and seventeen, but one hundred and thirty nine students attended BOCES. Right. So what what kind of um controls are in place now to you know so that this doesn't happen again like we we can't send more kids to boces than we have money for right dr talbot wants to take them they're entitled to that so enrollment has to align with the budgetary figure and so based on the budgetary figure we then enroll that number of students into the BOCES program. 
Now, because it is a two-year rolling average, you still may not be exact with the total amount billed because you could still be off from the previous year. But moving forward, the number of students budgeted or the number of students who will be enrolled. Yes, and what we also did in order to make sure that we are accurate in our projection, when we get to this part of the budget, we call BOSIS and say, what is our rolling average? And based on that, we do our projections. Thank you. Ms. Bawasi, just as a reminder, just kind of keep that mic close. Yes. Because, yeah. If you want to take it out of the Yeah, I think it's better if I take it out. Thank you. So this is summer school. Audiovisual. The numbers are pretty much the same as the prior year. Technology, same. Numbers are pretty much in sync with last year's budget. Go ahead, Ms. Santos. Ms. Mwazi, I thought, and I could be wrong, but I thought that we had uh, a grant for summer school. If that's, that doesn't say anything here about a grant. Yes, that's, that's it. Very good question. The grant monies that we receive requires a matching grant, a matching expense. So it requires us to also keep some monies in our own budget for part of the matching grant. That's why it is a good idea to keep this. And this could be used as a matching grant. Dr. Lang, do you want to add something to that? Thank you. Ms. Bawatsi, in addition to the uh, monies allocated for summer programming, there's also indirect costs that we're considering to match the grant that we are awarded as well. Correct. So just for cl clarification, not to go back, you're talking about summer program, not summer schools. Summer, summer programs, programs not summer programs. Okay. Yes. Okay. I, I, I do have a question going back to technology. Hold okay. on a second. So it's page 46 that I'm looking at. Okay. So right now there is a, a consideration to Dr. Talbot, there's a consideration to try to hire a director of computer and technology. And that's why we have a budget line of 180. There is a need for a director of technology. Uh, presently, we have a senior network engineer um, who is contracted and a data process who is contracted. Mm -hmm. Our goal is to move forward which as, with as much in-house involvement as possible. So if there was a decision to move forward with this position. Would this position also cover data and technology or just technology? It would cover data, definitely data and technology. Thank you. So, excuse me. So, we're talking about just go to my, yeah. uh, so there would be an increase then of about $40,000, $45,000 in a salary. Is that, is that correct? Is that the amount? Yes, that's that's correct. Um, and this was based on the prior experience with the positions that we tried to hire a couple of, about one or two years ago. That was the going rate. Right. So the, that. So the, um, the, the, for the 23-24, um, it was budgeted for 142. $142,000, but nothing was expended because there's no one in that position. Correct. Mm -hmm. right, thank but you. this is part of the money that is used to pay that data coordinator that we use as a contract service. Currently. Okay, right, thank you. Any 
Any questions on other instruction? The next section deals with transportation. As you know, we contract out all our fleet. And we don't, we are not expecting any significant changes. However, we'll be meeting with our transportation vendor tomorrow to review all our routes to see whether that we can find some significant savings here. Is that accurate? Yes, yes. absolutely. We have had prior meetings. Uh, we are looking at numbers and services, and this will be a follow-up meeting to help us further analyze the budget. So I, I do have a question. So when it comes to transportation, currently there are, um, let's say the school buses that may be used for the high school are not the same school buses that will be used for another, like say the middle school. Is it, it's a different fleet that will come out for the middle school students because the, the, the arrival times are, are too close together, correct? Yes, if the arrival times are too close together, they try to route it in such a way that they, they will be able to get the middle school students to school. However, the buses that drop, pick and drop the high school kid also go to the other school, go to Park Avenue to pick the kids to school. And then they do the Northwest route and the Northeast route as well. So Dr. Talbot, I do have a question. This is not really connected to the budget, but just for um, clarification. In regards to when we were kind of, when we have cut back on expenditures, did we change the number of after school buses for any of the schools or, or no we left in the same number for this year for this year for this year we were collecting data on the 6 30 p.m bus at the high school we run three to four after school buses to accommodate students who are in late programming and it was determined that the 6 30 bus was no longer needed at the high school and there, a 5 p.m. bus was no longer needed at the middle school because there was a 4.30 bus. And so we've been looking at ways to better strategize wheels on the ground. Moving forward to next year, one of our conversations has been around the number of buses that are traveling from school to school during our morning pickup. We have met with our building at administrators and we're looking at the times between pickup and drop off at each building. And so we're planning and strategizing more effective span of time, which will reduce the number of buses required during morning and uh, pickup and drop off. So those are some of the exploratory conversations and planning meetings we have been having as we're looking at our transportation needs. All right, so nothing is set in stone right now. You just look in. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any questions from any other board members regarding transportation? Then we jump to employee benefits. And that is on pages 61 and 62. As we mentioned, in our drivers, one of the major drivers of this budget is the health insurance cost. And you can see that the cost differential from last year to 24, 25 is about 10.06% increase. We also look at the tax anticipation note, that is the cost of the money we borrow before we receive our tax levies in the fall. Interest rates have begun to go up. Hopefully it will start going down very soon. And the last two years, 
we have experienced very sharp increases in the cost of borrowing. And this is also tied to the amount of money that we borrow. Because of the financial situation, we also have to borrow more. So we are projecting that the interest cost for our tax anticipation note next year will be about $700,000. We also have to look at the revenue side of this equation because the more we borrow, we are also allowed to invest the money in short-term instrument like CDs and all kinds of short-term instrument. And we do get revenues, interest income on those monies that we invest. So we may be going up by $400,000, but when we talk about the revenue side of the budget, you also see that the interest income is also going up. Another major, another new initiative in this budget is an energy performance contract. We talked about this as one of our major drivers. The district entered into an energy performance contract with Honeywell, and they will be coming in and installing energy efficient equipment throughout the district and retrofitting our lighting system to generate savings. Over time, the savings from the lighting is supposed to pay for the cost of the lease. If this is a lease expense. So we hope that in the end, the cost of the um, energy performance will be flat throughout the district. And the district will continue to save on energy cost over time. So, Just, Ms. Bwasi, just for typically, and not, I'm not trying to belabor this point, but when it comes to benefits, it, it goes up every year. So it's not like an unusual increase. And we, and for school districts, you have to always budget for increase in, in, in insurance. So it's not like it's an unusual expense. It's something that does go up every single year. Yes, it's more so after COVID than it was before COVID. COVID, we were looking, before COVID, we were looking close to 8%, but the last couple of years, it jumped up significantly. In fact, in 2023, because the health insurance companies bill us on a calendar year basis, the health insurance costs went up by about 14%. So coming down to 10% looks like it's a better deal than we had last year. Okay, thank you. Any more questions on any part of the budget? We can go back to page one if there are any questions. Does the board have any questions? Any additional questions for Ms. Bawati at all? No, they do not. Thank you very much. Thank you. So at this point in time, for those who are, are new to coming to the meeting, um, there's two opportunities for the community to, to speak. One is for community input regarding board agenda items. So if you picked up an agenda when you came in, um, that's where we're at. So being that this budget presentation was part of the agenda, if you have any questions about the budget, you can come and ask about the budget. Also, if you have any questions regarding any other items, then you can also ask. Um, there's two things I want to say before anyone comes to the mic. One is we will be uh, amending the agenda to add a, agenda item 2C1, which is a resolution. And I'll just read the resolution. Um, whereas each member of the Board of Education is obligated to maintain fiscal oversight, accountability, and exercise fiduciary responsibilities to the district. And whereas the Board of Education determines that in carrying out these obligations, it would be prudent to identify past accounting and financial actions of the district and determine whether any inappropriate financial actions have taken place. And whereas the Board believes 
that a forensic audit will assist in providing data to develop long-term and short-term financial plans, plans, excuse me, which accurately take into account income sources and projected expenses and will provide accurate and reliable financial information, recommendations on the system of internal controls in the district and provide guidance on corrective actions to restore fiscal stability to the district now. Therefore, be it resolved, the Board of Education is going to make a recommendation to a point of firm EFPR, which is a group. And so I just wanted to read the resolution um, that we're going to be amend that, amending the agenda um, under 2C1. And the reason that we are amending it now and doing it now is because we just met with forensic auditors tonight. So I just want to make the community aware of that. So if you have any questions about the budget presentation or anything else that's on the agenda, we'll take those questions now. When you come to the mic, please state your name and give your, just state your name. You don't have to do your address whatsoever. Say it again. So you, um, so when you when you come to the mic, when you come to the mic, you you are addressing the board. So that's why it stays in this particular di direction. If we can just, I know I don't want to uh, maybe just move it over that way just a little bit. So therefore, if they want to stand behind her, they're not going to be in the light. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. You don't have to move that far, <laughs> but thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Just if you want to take the mic out, you can definitely yeah. do that because it'll be easier for you to, to hold and take the mic out. Um. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is an, an immense honor to be recognized in front of my community and peers tonight. And we stand here to show our appreciation for all the care, resources, and opportunities provided to us by our parents in school. And most importantly, we give special thanks to our teachers, principal, counselors, and other staff members for providing us with knowledge, guidance, and encouragement throughout these years, thereby playing a significant role in shaping us into the students and people who stand before you today. So. Without disregarding the respectable distinction given to us, we knew that we cannot receive these honorable titles in good faith without reminding our board members of the gravity of our current situation. As a top 10 students, we fear that if the district's economic and employment crises persist, future scholars will not have the same access to the programs, clubs, extracurriculars, or methods for academic advancements that we have enjoyed. To say that all 10 of us have had amazing teachers would be an understatement. While we certainly put in the hard work and dedication to achieve these placements, the influence of devoted teachers play key roles in inspiring our study and academic success. We're people too. Aside from being amidst a tumultuous school environment, students face various personal challenges as well. Not to mention that traditional schooling does not and cannot suit everyone. However, despite all of these hindrances, I can attest on behalf of each student from K, pre-K to 12, in saying that there's always at least one thing a child can find solace in during school be it music or art class, physical education, or interacting with their favorite staff or faculty member, all of which consistently enrich a student's day to day, all of which we could not imagine experiencing high school without. Because of this, we fear for those who come after us in the future of our school. We would like to return as alumni and be proud to see that this district has not failed its people. We hope to see Amityville restored to its former state, or better yet, excel beyond. Even with our great achievements, it is difficult to ignore the profound loss your actions have inflicted upon our community, thus dismantling the very cornerstone of our schools. We implore you to find a way to rebuild and fortify our weakening foundations. Otherwise, what will future students, no matter their rank, have to stand upon? That is all. Thank you, and have a good night. Thank you so much. Just one other quick thing, I just want to note, you can stay there. I just want to note that um, Trustee Carol uh, um, Seoff was here, actually second vice president Seoff was here in executive session, but she left, There was she had a, a death in her family that, that she, and that's why she had to go. Hi, Wendy Canestro. Um, congratulations to all the students. And as they said, I'm sure they, I, they had a lot of help along the way from their teachers. So teachers are super important here as a uh, support staff. Um, a couple of things about the budget. Did you announce the tax levy or did I miss 
that? No, that I believe is going to be next. The next board meeting is going to okay. be okay. So I just want to talk about transparency. Usually budget meetings are preceded by the tax levy. We're having all these meetings and nobody is talking about the tax levy. That's how much our taxes are going to go up. I don't find that transparent at all. You talked about community meetings. There was one mention at the last meeting. However, there's nothing on the website. I don't know who's calling you and talking about community meetings. There's actually been not, no information pushed out. Um, so that's not transparent. So just, just kind of pause the clock for a yeah. second. And normally I don't like to interrupt. So in terms of community meetings, there's nothing that has been planned as of yet. There were some individuals who had communicated with administration asking to be involved with a community um, a committee, uh, a budget committee. But there's been no community meetings that have been set up. Nothing's been planned as of yet. She was just mentioning that it was going to be taking place. And I okay. think the tax levy was mentioned. So just uh, what is the tax levy? Just kind of you want to make sure you say it correctly. Just bring the mic close so people can hear. You. The, the current amount that we have is three point zero seven. Okay. Right. So okay. Then, thank you. Um, that is interesting about committees because I know myself. I've asked to be on many committees. I ask for community members to be on audit committee, and I get no answer. Um, I've also submitted budget questions, got no answer. So I guess it's who asked the question. No, that, that's not correct. So one that, thing, this is, is hold on a second. It's not it's not a um committee that we're talking about doing for, for budget. Um it's about groups of individuals getting together and discussing. So it's we're not we're not looking to establish a budget committee for this year because it's too late in the in the process. As we move forward next year that will be definitely a consideration to do a budget committee, as well as we, we will look at again, whether or not we wanna add anyone else to the audit committee, if we wanna make it separate instead of the entire board. So not that we're not listening, we are listening, but we're not changing the audit committee for this year, and we're not gonna establish a budget committee, but there will be different community meetings that will take place that individuals be allowed to come to, it's open to the community to discuss about the budget. So I just wanted to clarify okay, that. Thank you for clarifying. I hope you'll push out that information. Thanks. Um, to talk about transparency, you hired um, a retired business official for $15,000 and now you're hiring a forensic audit. Seems like a waste of money. Um, also your own policies dictate that you have to have an RFP. There's no RFPs. There was no RFP for the retired business official. There's no RFP for this forensic audit. Forensic audit doesn't fall under executive session. Um, so that wasn't even brought up until I mentioned it last week. So there's not a lot of transparency so with just, that. So just pause it again, just for clarification. Th there has been conversations about hiring a forensic audit. Not right? in public. It, it has not been, been in public, but there's been conversations that has occurred individually with myself and with the superintendent, not with the entire board. It was brought to the entire board about do you want to have forensic orders come in? So yes, it's something that we we brought the forensic orders in. Um, there was two different firms. They came in, and we interviewed the the two firms. Okay, so I, I have to mention that that conversation should have happened in public if you want to hire a forensic audit. That's my point. The, the initial conversation occurred with between myself and, and Dr. Talbot, and then was brought to the entire board. Thank you. Okay, um, just to move on, a couple of things. I brought this up last week on page. One, about the, the Board of Education's budget was $900. You overspent by $14,000. You told me that was because of the superintendent search firm. The superintendent search firm was $23,000. So I don't see how you're attributing that to the over expenditure of your own line item of so $900. So where's the clock? It came from two different lines. Part of the, the payment for the district-wise um, search firm came from that, pay that line and as well as another line. So it came from two different What's lines. What's the other line? What is um, Ms. Boatsy, what is the other line that it came yes. from? We paid for part of it in 2022-23, and part of it was on a purchase order, which was paid in 23-24. Okay, great. On page three, um, there's $5,100 built into the budget. I didn't see anybody object to this for a raise to the superintendent. If we're cutting staff, if we're limiting staff to one ream of paper a month, why are we giving the superintendent a raise? So it, you can pause the clock again. One of the things that was talked about last week was not only the superintendent, but all, also the assistant superintendents. We just left the line, we left the amount there. It does not mean that these individuals will get the raises. So we, we 
we, we budget it in just like we budget for other positions. We have to budget in for an increase, but we don't have to give the increase. So it's there. So if we don't want to give it, then we will not give it. How about taking it out? So, okay. <laughs> Um, page 12 is about security. It's going up $73,000. You said this was a big driver security. I found out, and I actually couldn't believe this was true. And I thought for sure I was being punked that the middle school students cannot watch their peers at activities or sports that security is keeping them out. Are we paying security to keep children out from cheering on their peers? You. Dr. Talbot, are you able to answer that? So we have the question. I can't answer that. I have the question. Okay. I'll let you know. I, I, I've confirmed that with several parents. Okay. Um, a couple of other things. Page, I'm going to talk really quick. Page 14. This is regarding the minor building repairs. Not all of this is necessary. Of course, like you'd want these things. And I don't disagree that I'd want these things, but I would I would encourage you to go through these things and, and cut some of these items um, to trim your budget. Um, on page, oh, I want to talk about the uh, director of technology. If, if, if I could just. So can I, because I, I do have a line that's behind you. So um, is, is <laughs> I just. I see some people shaking their so, head no um, in the front. So, so can, vote can we, can we, can I just, I'll let you come back again because you just ask you a quick question about data. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the person hasn't been here since uh, the fall of 22. You keeping the line item for technology. We have a third party vendor, Land Rover. So if you're saying you're going to hire somebody for technology, keep it in house, which I'm not disagreeing with, but there should be a savings then. So where is the savings that you're cutting out of the budget? So that that's why I asked the question about the data, director of data and technology. So once again, it's an item that's there. These are recommendations. As a board, we'll make a final decision whether or not that will stay in for that amount, if we're going to lower it or not. So Yeah, I, I guess my question is, if you're going to do that, which again, I'm not disagreeing with, but there should be then another savings by cutting out the vendor. So if you're presenting that you may be hiring this person for $185,000, I guess my question is, why isn't the board asking where the savings is for the vendor that's going to be cut? Okay, I understand your question. Um, okay, and just one more thing, the, the energy performance, you hired them in May 22 by resolution, and then you terminated the contract in June 23. I'm very confused about this $424,000. There's a resolution that you terminated the contract. Dr. Talbert or Ms. Boatsy, whoever wants to. I, I don't, if you can show me, I, I, I don't see where the contract was terminated. I'll, I'll send you the resolution. It was by resolution, June 23. I appreciate it. What's your name? Lisa Johnson. Lisa, Lisa Johnson. Lisa Johnson. The last time I was here, you told me you were going to give me an answer at the end of the night. Mm -hmm. I don't have three hours to sit around and wait for us to keep going through this stuff that she keeps telling us about. It's the same thing she told us to meet before and meet before that. 24, 24 and 25, it's the same thing. The question I ask, is there an investigation going on for this 3.6 or where is it? No one has answered that question yet. And I'm really starting to get pissed off that I've had to spend two, three hours, four hours sitting here and walk out of here with no answer. You told me on two different occasions that you have an answer for me at the end of the night. So in regards to an investigation, that was that resolution that I just read, that was in regards to hiring a forensic audit auditor to come in to do a, an investigation to find out exactly what has happened. So um, those individuals did not come into tonight to be interviewed. So I could not say that we were definitely going to do it until we selected someone to do it. Okay, so you telling me we three meetings in to this and you just now starting an investigation that she don't know because she's been telling me the same thing. She's been telling me where the money's that we know mm -hmm. where that is, but the money that we don't know, she haven't told me where that is. No one yet has said this is the reason why we can't have this money. Nobody and, said it yet. And that's why we're hiring uh, a forensic order. Not why we're hiring it. It should have been done by the time we got to this meeting. When I said it to you the first time, you should have had an answer for me then. 
How do you show up to a meeting when you know the elephant in the room is going to be that question and you don't have an answer for it? The first time you told me you wasn't going to answer it. This is number three. So what you're telling me is the, the missing money is in here or you're doing an investigation now to find out where that money is? Because to me, because to me, all of these people that don't have jobs now have something to do with that missing money. That's what it is to me because nobody's not telling me anything different. Okay, I understand what you're saying. And that's still not answering my question. So you're saying you're just now answering, you're just now doing an investigation on where that money is. So it, when we, in terms of hiring a forensic auditor, it's something that, number one, we had to get recommendations for forensic auditors. We had to contact them to find out whether or not they wanted to come in. So when, when let you were- Let me stop you one no, let me, let me finish. Hold, hold on. No, let me finish. Isn't that what she's here for? Isn't, no. Isn't she hired no, to she, do that? she's not- no, if she's doing the budget, why she, wouldn't she know? She, she's not a forensic auditor. So Listen to the, me. The, the other part, I'm, let, I don't have no, anything to do finish. with money. Let but me you finish. Can't if miss you want me to answer your question. You haven't been answering it, so let want... me answer it for you. You can't miss 3.6 million and just say she was here and that's not her job. You should know where it is when I asked you the first time about the secretary and the treasurer. You said they're not here. Well, then it all falls on her. When it don't fall on her, then it falls on the super. Somebody need to know or say something. Nobody answered the question. You keep doing all the talking, but nobody answering the question. We keep hiring people for money that we don't have. That makes no sense to me. Can you answer that? A couple of things. One is this: is when we looking at looking at to hire someone else. A couple of things we did. One one is this. We, we, we brought someone in to work along with Ms. Pawatsi for the budget because we felt as a board, in order for the community to believe the budget, that we needed to have someone else. That was number one. That was our decision. Number two, when it comes to, you asked me, I'm answering answer the question. You hear what you're saying? If you got, your decision to hire somebody else to so do you, something that you already got people me, here Excuse to me, do. sir. You, you're asking me a question, and now you want me to answer, Go but ahead. you're going to interrupt. So let me, let me finish. Go so ahead. let me finish. Go ahead. So when it comes to looking at looking at to find out exactly what happened, right? We have to hire someone independently. If we if we if we ask Ms. Bawati to do a deep dive to find out what happened, then she wouldn't be able to work on the budget, right? So we have to find out from someone else. That's number one. Number two, if Ms. Bawati came back with a report that said that there was nothing happened, this is this is this. I'm, I'm just bri briefing it. Then. Will the community believe her because she was the one who did the previous budget? That's why the board made a decision to have someone independently, not connected with the school district, not part of the internal orders, not part of the external orders, to come in to look at everything and ask questions, well, ask for documents and everything like right. that. So that's the reason, as a board of education, we decided to do that. The point that I'm making to you is that should have been done. By the time we get to here, it should have been done. If that's the case, then she not need it. I don't, I don't understand what you're saying to me. There's two different responsibilities. There's, there's two different responsibilities. Then hire somebody that do two. Forensic order that will do one thing. The budget planner does something different. So it's two different things. Is, is it still not the budget? You can't sit here and explain to me that that amount of money is missing. And even if she couldn't see that she missed, she missed it. You can't explain that to me. I'm not an accountant, and if I go through your, your books, I can tell you the hell is missing here. But you got somebody that you have on salary that you can't, that, that's not telling you that, but you're going to hire somebody else to tell you that. But we're doing all of this in the future. Everybody just keep kicking the can down the road, and nobody not coming to the solution. Thank and you. then I come, I, I'm, not, I'm not done. You're, that means nothing to me. Well, I'm, It means nothing to me. Your, your time is up. Me. You know why? Your because time I is sat up, in here for three hours to I listen to you, that. to listen to her tell me the same thing over and over and over and not answer the question. Now, we're getting close to it because when we don't get, a, get an answer to the question, then you start eliminating the people who's responsible for the money instead of eliminating the teachers. That's where we should start. The answer's right here. The Thank answer's you. right here. So we, we need to make a move towards that. Because it's a real simple answer. It's really not that difficult. Okay. I told you when I first came up here, I've sat on boards too. And when things go wrong, it's your fault. Okay. It's Thank your you. fault. And you just can't wave it off till we we okay. So when is this order to come in? Because we still 
on the order. You said the, the, the outside person is coming in to find out. When is that happening? This schedule to start March 18th. March 18th. Okay. Monday. Right. That, well, y'all already made that decision before we even got in here. Y'all made that decision. But... All right. So, um, board of board of education, as as I just be, before before we before we continue with um, agenda item questions, I would like to request that we extend questions for agenda items because normally it's only fifteen minutes. So I'd like to make a request that we extend the, the time for an additional like thirty minutes. Okay. Right. Motion. So we, I, I want to make a motion to extend the time to 30 minutes, but I'm just requesting that people stay to the three minutes so that way we can have everyone that's standing online to be able to come in and ask their questions. Please keep in mind that we may be able to answer your questions tonight. If not, we'll answer them. I'll, have, I'll give it to the superintendent. So can I have a motion to extend? So Juan Leon was first, Jeanette Santos was second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So we're going to extend... A, um, questions from the committee for agenda items at this time. Caroline Fanning, 12 Commerce Boulevard. Um, on the bottom of the front page of the budget, it says under debt servicing for 2022-2023, you spent $10 million. But the budget for that year was 4.1. That's almost a $6 million discrepancy. Could you explain that? Dr. Talbot or, or Ms. Bawatsi? On, on, the, on the first page where it has the district summary, summary, on the bottom it says debt service transfers. Yes. That's, what, that's the line that she's referring to. So 21-22 was a certain expense. 22-23, it went up to 10,000. 23-24, it was budgeted for seven. So the question is, wh what happened in there? No, you're looking yeah, at 23-24. Not on this page. I got this off the district website. You are budget for 22-23 was for 4.106. So just for, so she has something that came from the from the website, website, but it's not not here on the line. She's saying for the website. Do you want to see it? Yes, I would appreciate it. I'll take my seat now. I'll, oh, all right. I'll read. Yes, I'll review it. Because I can for me about this. Hi, uh, Mark Remain, Cedar Lane. Um, I just wanted to point out an issue regarding the scope of your forensic audit. Um, I just ran some section block and lot numbers throughout Amityville, and uh, I also wanted to just give you some context first. Um, in two thousand, the population of the Village of Amityville was 9,441 people. And this is from Town of Babylon website. In 2020, it was 9,500. So you've only had a population growth of 60 people over that time. But more importantly, um, when you compare the district costs between 2008 and 2010, you had roughly 2,700, 2,800 students at that time. And of those students, about 475 were special ed. Um, between 2013 and 2017, you went to an enrollment above 3,000, and your special ed students grew to about 550, 514 in that range. Um, the thing that's important to realize here, when the gentleman was talking about where's the money, um, as an example, there used to be a trailer park that was across the street from um, McDonald's up on Route 110. Um, their last, uh, I have a record here, in 2000 and, let's see, uh, 11, they paid uh, a total tax bill of 592,000 and their school taxes were 275, 274. That property is now um, Braveon, mm -hmm. who from Babylon Industrial Development Agency uh, received an abatement on their taxes. So if you go onto the Babylon websites right now, the town of Babylon, they pay zero into the school district. The same is true for Avalon um, in Amityville. The same is true for Ann Press Plaza. Those, just those three properties, and this isn't even discussing commercial properties where you have the same problem, um, just those three properties alone, would be, their school tax would be $2,452,000. So there's a good chunk of the missing money that, um, that this gentleman was asking about. And when we're worried about something known as a brain drain, their assessment on library taxes would be $118,000, but they pay zero. Um, the most important thing here is very often we'll hear people say, well, we need to have these abatements so this way we can have these developments occur. 
Um, there's apparently a development on Oak Street, which was done by a local builder, which is 24 units. His uh, school tax this year, because he didn't get any abatements, was $83,000. His library tax was 4000 Total taxes that he's paid between 2019 and 2023 is 483000 What's happening here is the same thing that's happening in a lot of districts across Long Island, is that districts are losing, they're, they're, they're being smothered by the fact that they're losing their tax revenue, not through vote, voter choice, but because of an unelected board, such as the Industrial Development Agency, deciding to give a tax abatement. So the real issue here isn't so much, and look, I, I, I have no doubt in large things like this, there's all sorts of levels of incompetence, but I don't necessarily feel that it may be purely incompetence on the part of this district. It may be the fact that you unknowingly had a large portion of your tax revenue pulled out from under you. Thank you. Hello, good evening, Megan Messman. Um, I can ask about the agenda and the budget, you're saying? Okay. Yes. So agenda item 2E, abolishment. There's, no, again, just like last week, there's nothing in the backup. So are additional, there's additional staff being accessed tonight? Dr. Talbot, I'll give that up to you. Last week, the board took the vote on the accessing of teaching positions. Mm -hmm. Tonight, there are teaching assistants, instructional supervisors, and non-instructional titles that they will vote on tonight. And there's nothing, there's so those those cuts impact our students for sure. And there's nothing in the backup to tell the community what's going on as far as, again, how many positions. I know you don't, even though all the other pages have employee names, you can leave off the names to be transparent with the community as to who you're accessing and where, how many. So as we shared before, okay. Uh, two instructional supervisors. Tonight, five teaching assistants. And Dr. Waite, can you give us the number of the non-instructional titles? So we have one custodian, two security guards, and five monitors. Wow. Didn't you, last week we lost a custodian and a security guard too, and no. No, no. no last week only the teaching staff. Okay, so you didn't accomplished. have it in the agenda, so how did we know what you voted on? And you said it last time, you said 25 teachers, six PPS, you listed it all out. Six TAs, custodian, security. Thank you. Right. <laughs> yes, but the board did not vote on everyone resolution. last week. They only voted on the resolution for teachers. That was the only resolution presented was teachers. It was blank. So how do we know? So again, with the transparency, we don't know what you're voting on. I believe the resolution did state teachers. Am I correct? That was cool. Um. Um. So, so go, please, please, I'm just, I'm just asked, just pause the clock. I'm just asking that you don't call out from the audience. We want to allow individuals who are here at the mic to have the opportunity to make their comments or ask their questions. Okay. Um, item 3B2, an appointment of an interim administrator for special education and pupil personnel services. Mm -hmm. What? Um, Okay, let's go to the back. We're gonna now pay for somebody for nine hundred dollars per diem per day. Yeah, we have to. We have to because we um, agreed to a resignation and agreed to pay for that personnel for so it, till that, September. That this is that's a personnel. Uh, this it's a personal matter, so I can't go into the details. But we do have to 
have an interim in that spot. So, but I can't go into the details in regard to that particular um, position. So we have to pay for two people to do the same job. At, at currently, yes, it's through personnel. The, September. Yes, currently we have to. Um, okay, uh, agenda C three C five. Accept the use of town of Brookhaven facilities. What is that, Dr. Talbert? Ms. Bawatsi, if you can reference that. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we receive a request from the athletic department to, to enter into an agreement with the town of Brookhaven for them to um, lease their facilities to them to play. And that was the contract. For Brookhaven to lease the facilities to Amityville? Yeah, that, that, that facility is owned by the town of Brookhaven. Just, just for clarification, because I can see and, and make it, yeah. just explain what facilities are you referring to that for this particular agreement? So that's just that's athletic what, facilities in our district or in Brookhaven? In Brookhaven. So we're, I'm sorry. So we're going to pay to use facilities in Brookhaven when we have our own fields and sports facilities here. Is that and how much money are we paying? What? This what is what is this town of Brookhaven? We, we're not we're not paying anything so for it. We're not paying it? anything for it. You just said a lease. What like what? How do no, you it's it? it's a waiver. It's a waiver. A liability release. 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 It just 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 do me a favor. Please do not yell out from the audience. Allow the person who's at the mic. So just clarify in regards to the use of the town of Brookhaven facilities, just clarify, are we, is it, is it a lease? Is it, are we going out that way to use the facilities? That's what's the clarification that's being requested. Thank you. Yeah, they, they don't have the detailed information. So they're looking for the detailed information about it. So that's okay. what's being- So we got this because all school district, they just want to avoid liability. So they just want us to sign the waiver so that if anything should happen to any of our kids on that facility, they wouldn't be liable. It's for our athletic baseball team to Correct. play under the lights at the town of Brookhaven. Thank you. When they play at their team. Play a game at night. Okay. And it's gratis. Yes. There's no cost. That's not the team is playing at night and the town of Brookhaven facilities are available, but we have to have a release liability waiver. So we're not carrying the insurance, you're saying? We have our own. We, we have, have our own insurance. insurance. Okay. We have our own insurance that covers everything. Um, yeah. I know there's a okay, lot of wait. people that want to talk. I, yeah. um, I think at the beginning of the meeting, Dr. Talbert, you mentioned June 2023 being aware of the financial situation and acting then to ensure that controls were in place. Again, that's not how you presented it to the community in November. When you got the order report back, it was as though you had no idea that we were had a $3.6 million deficit. So now you're saying tonight you've known since June. I did not say we've known since June. I said the audit report ending June okay. 23rd. The audit, um, I began August 1st, yep. and the auditors reported out November 8th on those findings and their recommendations for internal controls. Right. Since that time, we have worked diligently to put in internal controls that were brought to our attention. Okay. Are you able to tell the community what the deficit will be at the end of this school year? Like what you're anticipated? <laughs> well, you're not anticipating a deficit ah. at the end of that's, this. I mean, it's yeah. hard to understand when you see actual expenditures versus approved budgets on some of these line items. Right now, you projecting that you're going to be able to finish the school year without a deficit? We are monitoring it. We do have a projected cash flow of, I don't know if you will. Uh, we have a projected fund balance, mm -hmm. not cash flow. 
okay. of about 1.6 so far. And we're still getting some surprises. If a kid comes in and we did not anticipate that student coming in and they need special services, we are mandated to provide those services. Those are the biggest cost drivers. Sometimes we don't know because by law, we have to educate the kids. So those are the surprises, but at this point in time, we project that we'll end with 1.6, but we, we don't know anything could happen between January and June. What do you mean by end with 1.6? 1.6 in the surplus, in the general fund balance in general fund. Okay, you all see that monthly in the finance, the monthly treasurer's report that you're reviewing. You see that and you believe that? Yes. We're monitoring that. Thank you. Hi, Debbie McClellan, Amityville. Oh, sorry. Um, a couple of things uh, that I wanted to bring up. Uh, the public statement about the forensic report. When uh, the, uh, what Ms. Johnson does, uh, Ms. Johnson said that um, we discussed, but she did she didn't say when did you discuss it in public. When did you discuss it in public today? At the time of the um, resolution. So this board just magically comes together and puts a resolution together? Our attorney helps us with that. So you discussed it as a board to hire a forensic audit yes. out of the public's eye. Okay, yep. just want to clear that up. Um, and you're going to do a forensic report and you know the ramifications that comes with that, right? You're going to have the courage to stand by it, the results, and do what needs to be done. A forensic report isn't a happy report. We understand that, and okay. if we if we were not happy with it, we would not have done it. Okay, very good. Um, big conflict with um, the uh, superintendent when you mentioned June and putting in controls. I'm under the impression, based on watching the the meetings from home on the Zoom and every, that you guys were alerted to these issues in November. Am I misunderstanding that? Okay, so no, November. Okay. Um, on the website, posted on November 27th were the financials for 2022 and 2023, posted on the same day. I found that interesting because you, you went with the, the current one and a year old. That should have been posted. They were posted on the same day in November of 23. But if you actually look at the report, which is dated June 30th, as the superintendent pointed out, um, June 30th is not November. The cover letter, oh, sorry. The cover letter from the auditors is to the Board of Education, Amityville Union Free School District, Amityville, New York. Now, it's mail, I get it, but it's to the board. It is not to the superintendent, who was Dr. Fail at one point, and now it's Dr. Talbert. It wasn't to the business official, it was to the school board. You can't relinquish that. This is right here, the Amityville School Board, the letter. In that letter, and I just printed out two pages, a lot of your bullet points that you pointed out of why we are missing money or don't you know over budgeted is in this letter it's actually at bullet points in the letter that was addressed to you i think the community really needs to understand how that happened that's a big deal if it's addressed to the board of education yes somebody opens it up the superintendent is supposed to disseminate it to the board give it to them and then at some point you do a official report. I sat on a board. I know how this works. If I was handed a report, 
months after it was issued and then tried to tell the community, uh -huh, we didn't see it. That's a dereliction of duty, period, the end. I, I just, this one I can't get past. Um, I did have other questions, but um, the com uh, the budget committee that you were talking about? It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be a budget I, I understand, oh, I just wanted to um, say, uh, the last district that I was in, one of the best things that happened after we came out of a two and a half million dollar hole was a citizen's budget advisory committee. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know how it's done and how it's done properly, talk to Free Okay, thank you. Um, the community should be part of that. Definitely. And they would get that report much earlier than November. All right, so just one quick thing, just this someone um, who has New Jersey license plates, the lights are on and it's license plates 54-DMA, it's New Jersey. So if you have, the security guard just told me to let people know that um, that the lights are on for that particular car. Hi, Margaret Chef Amityville. So um, I actually say I, I'll applaud you every time. So I applaud the thought that you someone put their thinking cap on and decided to get a forensic audit, regardless of the price, because I think even though it's a big nut, which I'm sure, which is my question, what's the estimated cost for the uh, uh, so forensic audit? It, we, we the estimated cost that we're gonna the le the legal will finalize the, the contract, but the estimated cost that was provided to us was eighteen five. It, it was not to exceed eighteen five eighteen thousand five hundred. Okay, that was the max. And is it obviously they take a long time? So it's what's the timeline? Is there a window? Um, one of the things that we requested that they have it completed by April 30th. April 30th this next year. month. Yeah. Yep. To be able to give us some some response something by April 30th. Yes. Yep. Okay, that's a that's a lot. That's a lot of money for a short amount of time of work to find. I don't know what they were going to find because that that's not a big window, and you're paying a ton of money for not a big window. So. It doesn't even give time to find really the root of the problem. We we asked a lot of a, a lot of questions. We asked, and in terms of what were they going to look into the details. So no. so it was it's it's an in depth thing that they're that they will be able to provide to us. If okay. it's something that they need to go back more years, like three, four, five years back, that would cost more money. But the time frame that they're going to be looking at, it's going to be. Okay, that's like I said, that's expensive for a month's worth of work. But so you went in for two RFPs basically, normally it would be three, I'm thinking, but that's beside the point. And my question is the the company that you decided to pick was EFPR, you said? Yes. I have a question. Has that company have done has done anything in the Wyand Dance School District? No. Can you categorically say that they've never done anything in I don't, the Wyand Dance School District? That 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 I don't know. That that I don't know. I would like you to confirm by the next meeting whether they have any in, had any interest to work with the Wine Dance School okay. District and any contacts or incestuous relationships there. Um, and have you ever thought? In so, the, in I'm, the, I'm sorry. I'm just just kind of pause it. Based on my 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 colleagues over here, they looked at the list again based on the list and the um, school district they work with. They said no. So, but I will definitely confirm. Thank you. Um, in the line by line, you have all these things. Well, it's in there, but you don't necessarily have to have it like the superintendent's raise or whatever. So did you ever do a top sheet and say all these, the wish list of it's in there, but we, you don't have to have it. Did you ever just do a spreadsheet and say, if we put all those together, what would that savings be? So that will be a part of the next steps. We've done the line by line. We've Board has you know. made suggestions. We're hearing things from the community. That, so we're not finished. So you to know. answer your question, it could be something that just have, you know, the pork side and say, all right, this is going and, and a big number so we can see that you're making strides. And what is the total amount of money saved by the cutting of the staff? What's the dollar amount? Dr. Talbert or Ms. Bawatsi? <laughs> it's about, it's $4.6 million. And that is a combination, like I mentioned in my presentation, it's a combination of the positions that were in general fund 
positions that were in the grant that are being eliminated, as well as an offset with the positions that were budgeted in the grant, but are now being pulled over into general fund because of seniority. Maybe what may be beneficial as we move forward is to maybe break that down, Ms. Bawatsi, so therefore the community can see exactly how many were, were grants, how many um, moved from grant to the general fund, and how. so that will probably be a clear explanation for everyone. 100%. And to the point, um, Ms. Uh, Bawatsi, last meeting said we were talking about the budget and the over spending and all that. And uh, Ms. Bawatsi said that there was an influx of immigrants that really related into the um, to the budget. And I just wanted to know how many immigrants have the, have joined the uh, the district. So that and was of, and of those dis and of those immigrants that have influxed the district, how many of them are in special ed? So that the question that that the response that she provided is something a question that was posed to Dr. Talbot, and we were looking. We, we we want that information as well. We want to know how many immigrants or how many how many people have moved into the district. So it was a statement that was made, and we we want yeah. the answers as well. You, you think you'd know that off the top of your head? I I don't know that off the top of my head. I, I think you, as a as a body of so people who maybe watch maybe, over the district should probably know what that number is so, on the top of their head, or at least a good estimate. So, Miss Miss. Ms. Hutchison, Mrs. Hutchison, legal. Hold, hold on a second. Hold on a second. The district generally doesn't have the immigration status of new students. That's not information that's required by the state education department or in any documentation provided to the district. What they may have is the status of the uh, English learning that a student may have, but they don't have the immigration status of the students in any documentation that I'm aware of that's required by the district or by the state. I'm just I'm the, I'm just asking because Ms. Bilwatsi said, oh, we had an influx, oh so God. that was affecting the budget. So not that's sure the, how so the district how to, gets access to the immigration status right. of a student. But then Ms. Bilwatsi, why could she claim to say something of such, uh, you know? How can you say that and then not back it up? So what? So just kind of make sure you stop the time. Um, thank you. So to to your question, what would in her response? That was information that we said we want more details. So we know that we we cannot ask the status as I'm not as, uh, yeah. No, but I, let, let, let let me finish. But yeah. whether to to your question, whether it's people kids people coming into the district, how many people came into the district, how many required services? So right. that information you can you can pose the question that way. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, and the other thing about again, Mrs. Bawatsi, um, Ms. Bawatsi, basically, the whole thing with Brookhaven, that's the kind of transparency that we're talking about. That's the kind of explanation that we need. You you just have these line by lines. It's like you you just throw it out there. There was no explanation. We had to go like dot deep dive into finding out what in God's name that meant. But those are the kind of things. It just takes it takes a little sentence or in the, in the explanation. But that's the kind of transparency, as stupid as that sounds, which costs nothing, but still nobody knew what you were talking about. Good evening. Um, my name is Ciara Pedway. Um, I just wanted to know what is the plan for, uh, since you guys are accessing all these teachers and assistants, um, what's the plan for kids next year in special education? Um, because I have a child who is in special education. We started private and in private schools, they don't have to have certifications to be able to handle special education students. We then looked around to see where to go and we picked Amityville. The fact that I picked Amityville to come because of the way the special education department is to now feel like my child may regress because he won't have the uh, aid that he has now. Um, is very troubling. So I, I want to know what is the plan. 
So thank you for sharing your concern. We want to let you know that all mandated services will continue for our students with special needs. So there are no worries. All mandated services will continue. If you would like to speak separately about any individual questions you may have about your particular child, we would be more than happy to sit and have that discussion with you. I appreciate that. Um, but with that, I'd also implore anyone else who does have a child in special education to ensure that they do not try to give you a... a so you just have to has, address the board. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I will. Thank you. To make sure that they don't give you an aide that has three or four children that they also have to look after because that is not fair. And that is not what the IEPs say. So make sure you really read your IEP and you understand it. And when you go to the meetings, you ask those questions. One more thing um, with regards to technology, I really want to understand how the Chromebooks work because my child last year did not have a Chromebook for six months. And when she went to school with her personal one, was told she cannot use the personal one. And then I had to go to Miss Dr. Lang, which I appreciate. She pulled some strings and we got a Chromebook on that day, but it shouldn't take all that. And it shouldn't take me having to take off work to get my child a Chromebook that the school is supposed to be supplying. When I see what the figures look like, I'm totally confused. So what's up with that? Sure. So the goal is to have a one-to-one -one initiative with Chromebooks for every child. Um, to promote a secure network it should be a school-owned Chromebook. Understood. And the goal is for every child to have a Chromebook. And so we are currently working with our building administration to ensure that that's occurring. And it's a work in progress, but we're getting there. Well, I can tell you my, old, my oldest has two right now. And the reason for that is because she lost the first one. I then was told I had to pay $300 for her to get the new one. I pay the $300 and long and behold, the next day it pops up. And then when we go and I'm like, okay, so can I get my three back? And I was told I could not. So now she has two Chromebooks. How does that suffice? Okay. So let us follow up with you on that. Please, I, thank you. Okay. Good evening. My name is Rita Brooks Tyson. I live in East Massapequa. I have a question I'd like to ask the board. When you hired me, you knew you were having financial problems and you still hired me. And you hired several other people. And now you're telling us we, we, we don't have jobs in September. Is that fair? It's not fair. Why did you hire me knowing that you were having financial problems? I'd like an answer to that, please. Somebody answer me, please. You knew that you had financial problems and you still hired me. When did you get hired? Excuse me, in September. Okay. We can find out so much later than that. So. Really? What'd you say? Dang. I said that's not true. It's not bullshit. Dang. Dang. I heard what you said. I'm not talking to you. I don't care I, who you talking to. I'm talking to you. Like, excuse me, board board members, please, please, do 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 not board members, please do not call out. Please, please. Audience, please, 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 Dave, please, board members, please, please, please. To your to your question, unfortunately, I can't I can't give an answer. All right, so you're looking for an answer. I can't give an answer. I don't think Dr. Talbot is going to give an answer. So. So what? I, I, I don't, I don't, we, I can't give an answer if Dr. Talbot's not going to give an answer. So I can't give an answer. I don't have an answer for you. And 
I'm not too sure if Dr. Tab will be able to give an answer for you. Well, who's going to give me an answer? I need an answer. I can ask Dr. Talbot to address it with you at another point in time, but I don't think it's going to be addressed tonight. Uh, not tonight. It's not going to be addressed right now. Okay. Here we go. Thank you so much. And I'm just going to tell you, it's your loss. Even Gary, Prospect Street. Uh, just a question. Just, about... just I would say take the take the mic out. Oh, sure. Else, what's going to happen is we may be able to hear you, but if someone is at home, okay. they can't hear you. Perfect. Better, right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just a question about uh, the resolution for a uh, forensic uh, like yes review. <clears throat> From what it sounds like, based on when you read the resolution earlier, that this is a done deal with this firm that. Uh, you, you you mentioned before it's a it's already a, pretty much a done deal. E, whatever the name of the firm was. So to answer your question, I'm gonna we're gonna vote on it. So it all depends on if my fellow board members will will approve it or not. All right, but you've essentially put together, I presume, some sort of a retainer agreement with this entity, uh, which will outline the scope of of their inquiry and what it is you expect it this firm to 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 give you. So to, to answer your question, that's what legal is going to work out. So by, by, by vote, if we vote yes tonight and having the resolution, if it turns out, and please correct me if I'm wrong, legal, if it turns out that we are not in agreement with the contract the person comes up with, then we won't, we won't bring the person on. But well, what, we, what we didn't want to do, we didn't want to, if we waited for legal to do the contract and approve it, and then let us know about it, it would not be into next month, into April, or we'd have to have a special meeting to vote on the contract. So the decision was to do this, see what the contract comes out to be, and then go from there. And please correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Hutchison. So, so there is currently no written contract at this point, signed or unsigned? Right. So the, the approval is subject to the contract being reviewed by our office. Has the a contract been submitted for review at this point? At this point, we're going to put the contract together with the um, with the company so that it can be reviewed pursuant to the terms of the resolution, which also includes the eighteen thousand five hundred dollar sure. limit and the time period for review. And we actually should add that to the resolution now that I'm saying yeah. it out loud. I'm I'm sort of more interested in what the scope is and okay. to the extent that that whatever agreement there is even if it's in a, in a draft form at this point what so, is the scope of the review that so you're the scope is for? outlined in the resolution and then the time period should be included in the resolution as well so this i guess actually I the, 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 the reason I, I i raise this is because i don't have the clearly uh, you know there when a school district is underwater mm -hmm. there there are consulting firms that deal specifically with those kinds of situations correct uh, and when it comes to that i would expect that it would make sense to have somebody obviously go through how we got into this situation how do you remedy that situation how do you make sure it doesn't happen again all of those things That's a and and will will it be the expectation that this firm will stay with us? That is, see us through the improvement of the current situation, or is it just here's a report, go ha go have at it? So to answer, as of right now, they're just going to do the forensic audit. If we make and they're going to once they're done, they said they they will do a presentation to the community as well. Then from that point, if a decision is made to keep them on, then that's when we would have to come up with a whole nother contract to keep them on. Because, because it strikes me that, that you know, if there is a firm that is an expert in dealing with districts with these kinds of financial issues and can guide them through the process going forward, I mean, we are where we are right now, mm -hmm. but we gotta be thinking about where we're going in the future. And uh, it, it just seems to me, and, and the $18,000 doesn't bother me, uh, and and what what would bother me would be a report and then see you later. Uh, this and has to be an ongoing thing for the future. And that's why the resolution was written the way it was, so that it will assist the district with data, long-term and short-term financial plans, things of that nature. So it's 
not only does it give a snapshot of what happened, but then it can assist the district moving forward. So we kind of wrote it very specifically like that because we do understand that there needs to be some type of assistance. Right. And the scope would be for the uh, July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023 time period. Two other questions and I'll sure. be brief. Uh, the individual that has been hired for $15,000 to assist with budgeting, uh, as I understand it, the name is Carl Fraser, is that correct? Mr. Fraser. Okay, Mr. Fraser. Um, and you are an assistant superintendent for uh, business? So, no, right, right. He's just, he, he's, re, um, he's retired. Okay, but you're you're. He, he did. Yes, I am. I retired as assistant superintendent for business. For business, and we we have an assistant superintendent for business here, do we not? Right. Yes. Okay. And now we're hiring a forensic accountant firm to go through the budgeting the, materials the, as the well. The forensic accountant firm would, is going to be looking at, like you said before, what happened and what controls are going to put in place. His focus is is just to assist with developing the budget. So. The board made a decision to bring someone in to work with Ms. Bawatsi. Our concern was that the community would not possibly believe the budget if it was just presented by Ms. Bawatsi. So that's why we brought in someone to work with her. So uh, uh, I know. Okay, it just strikes me as odd that, that now, we, now we're bringing in a second layer of... of to go deeper. He's, he's, not, he's not doing an investigation at all. Right, he's no, I, I get that, but he's going to be the... Assistant to the assistant superintendent for business? Yes. Okay. For sure. My last question is, uh, there was a budget item for um, ch uh, charter school students. Uh, and I think there was a, a point made that the increase in the number of students going to charter schools was one of the drivers of the current budget situation problem that we're faced with. Yes. Um, does it cost the district more for a student within the district to go to a charter school than it does for them to be a, a student within the district? Um, Dr. Talbot, do you can you answer that for me, please? Yes. Charter school tuition is a separate budget line. And when students register to attend a charter school, in the budgeting process, the district projects a higher number, hoping to capture the number of students who would go. That money is separate from the per pupil, the per pupil cost to educate your regular ed students and your students with special needs. In addition to charter school tuition, you have the cost for transportation and you have the cost for health and welfare services. So there are separate budget line items. Is there anything you, either of you could add to clarify it even more for our person here? Well, I, then if I could just ask, so what you're saying is it is more expensive for the district to have a student in a charter school, correct? The cost factor is not that different from educating our own students, but the allocation of budgeting is separated and it's different. Maybe they can clarify it a little more for you. I think what the charters do for us is that they take away the monies that we could have added to our budget because there's a per people allocation that is given to them because if there are 10 kids in a class and one student goes to a charter school, our cost remains the same, but they are taking the money from us mm -hmm. to give to the charter school. That's where the cost is. Okay, I'm, I'm still like, any, I'm, I'm sorry. Is there any transportation involved in that? Yes, transportation, health services, textbooks, as well as um, software and all those costs are also given to the charter schools. All right, so it's still your position that that is a significant driver of the current budget situation? Yes. Okay. That's all I have. Thanks so much. Thank you.
Really what we're witnessing here is the collapse of a school district with no money and no teachers. And it's a shame because everybody should want to send their kids to public school. I'm a big proponent of public schools. And um, I think it's terrible to blame charter school parents. I mean, the money follows the child. And if, if parents don't feel they're getting a quality education, they certainly have every right to go to a charter school. The money's there and you do get some aid back on that. You get some money back from the state. Um, I want to ask the English teacher that's retiring at the middle school, are you replacing them? Isn't that a mandated position? Dr. Talbert? If the high school programming requires replacement, then yes, we will be replacing. Is it at middle school? Isn't the retirement for the middle school English? If it's middle school. Okay, with all due respect, you don't really pay attention to the people talking. Um, <clears throat> A couple of other things. The board keeps saying they had no idea about this money till the November 8th um, presentation by the audit. But I will remind you on May 10th, they, you approved a resolution for a TANS. That's a tax anticipation note because you don't have cash flow on hand. You're not properly you know, maintaining your budget for $18 million. On September 6th, you rescinded that $18 million TANS and approved a resolution on September 6th for $27 million. Like, is anybody reading what's in front of you? It's a big sign. You were, had big problems. You had big financial problems. Um, one of the things I want to talk about is special education. Somebody touched on it. And I really am having a problem with like blaming special education. They are entitled to FAPE, a free and appropriate education, public education. If the district can't provide the services needed, they have every right to go out of district, which does cost more. These children require services. They require an appropriate education. And I am sick and tired of you blaming special education, our most vulnerable students. Enough is enough. So um, just pause for a second. We're, we're not, as the board and as a cabinet, we're not blaming special education. We're just stating that this is one of the costs that went up. So we're not blaming anyone that's on, on that. No one's being blamed. We're just pointing out that it costs X amount one year. It was anticipated to be X amount next year, and it went higher. So we're not blaming anyone. Okay, we're going to blame the bad budgeting, though, okay? Because the audit, the audit conclusion was there was loose to no controls and poor budgeting. So let's blame it for what it is and stop with the drivers. Um, you spoke that the um, pupil personnel director, you're paying somebody a full-time salary of $181,400 um, full-time salary, and they are retiring September 3rd. I understand you're saying you need to do that. We're going to be paying now $110,000 for a second person to do the same job. You're saying it's required. I understand. Was the district clerk consultant required? Was the second business official required? Like none of these things are required. You throw money at problems. And to the gentleman's point right before me, we, we, we don't need this anymore. You're saying that the community doesn't trust you unless you put in somebody else to assist with a business official. I got news for you. Nobody trusts any of you. You lie all the time, all day long. I've caught you in a thousand lies. I foil documents. The documents tell the truth. And you lost the confidence of the community. Honestly, you should all resign. If you're not going to resign, you should be voted out. Good evening. My name is Jacqueline Stevenson, and I am extremely nervous right now. Um, but I have three minutes to say what I want to say. Um, I have a quick comment, a quick question, and a quick suggestion. So my comment is um, last week, my one of the reasons why I'm nervous because I get very emotional when I talk about something I'm passionate about. Um, my eight year old came to our bedroom door and when he's excited, he lowers his voice. So he said, mom, he's eight years old. I heard from my friend today that Mrs. such and such, I'm not gonna say who, is getting F-I-R-E-D. Mom, F-I-R-E-D. So he I brought him to the room and I said, you know, what, 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 what did you hear? Well, mom, I don't understand it because she's the best teacher I ever had. And she did nothing wrong. She did nothing wrong, mom. So I, in the best way I could explain on an eight-year-old level what was going on. 
Still, he didn't understand it. Why her? Was his question. Why her? Can't they do something to fix it? And I said, yeah, Joshua, because you know what I always say? Yes, mom. There's always a solution to every problem. Okay. That leads me to my question. Last week, I believe it was Wendy Canestro asked a question. And she her question was, do you are you able to give a list of the names of people who are being let go? So I didn't hear anybody address that today. So I'm just wondering about her question. So I'm actually going to ask, Ms. are we legally allowed to provide to the public the list of all the names of people that are being let go? Yeah, so legal saying yes. So yes, we'll provide the names. Okay. How and when? Where? Um, so it, it, she's saying it could be part of the resolution. Just so the resolutions are, are there was one res resolution last week with the teachers, and there was the, there's other resolutions tonight. So what we can do is probably I mean, just add, add typically, the names to the resolution. Yeah. So typically, you're really reducing the position. So it's not so much the person. But then the person holding the least amount of time in the position is the person who's, you know, essentially going to get excess. Yeah. So the resolution can certainly read um, that this position will be excess, and the person with the least amount of uh, seniority in that position will be the person that's let go. And then you can indicate the name of the person that's let go. But it just depends on how a, a district words the resolution. It could be just the person with the least seniority and they kind of go through their list and reduce that person or they can indicate the name. So it is, it's okay to release the name. Okay. So what we can do, uh, Mrs. Hutchins, can we, we're voting on these items tonight. Can we, at the, because the public want to, they want to know the names. So what's the best way to, to handle this, this situation? Do we, So we, we have the resolution and we have, we have the, they have the name. Okay, and then I, I could read. So can we, it, once, once we list, we'll list it on the minutes. So we'll do it, we'll list it on the minutes. Right. The next week? I mean, the, um, next, the next meeting? No, the, the minutes. Oh, the tip, minutes. The, the minutes, minutes. Okay. yeah, we'll list it okay. on the minutes. So that leads me to my suggestion. Um, one of the things that I do not like is when a meet meetings are not productive. Because, right, you, you sit in the meetings for hours and hours. You want the meeting to be productive. So is there a way or is someone keeping track of all the questions that are being asked at every meeting? Who's asking them? Is someone keeping track of that? So And, and how do you... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. No, I was going to say, and if so, how do you go about following up and letting the public know the answers to those questions? What is so the process? The, the first... The first part of your question is usually what we try to ask the public to do is to write down the question to make sure that we have the correct question. If not, the district clerk has to listen to the audio um, because it's difficult for her to write down. She tries to write down the questions, um, but she also has to make sure that she's stopping the timer. So she has to listen to the audio. They do have questions that were asked over the last couple of meetings with the answers. They, it just has to be posted. And that's going to be posted when and how? So I, I believe that it's all done. My understanding was all done like last week. So I, I won't, I will say within the next five business days, it'll be posted. We'll okay, sure. because the question that she asked would have never been answered if I hadn't asked it right now. So I'm just trying to figure out the process to make these meetings more productive. That's mm -hmm. all. Just a suggestion. All right. Thank you. Hi, Megan Messman. Um, we uh, a, a petition was submitted. So I'm just gonna hold up because that's not that's not a, an agenda item. So okay, at yeah, the end. Yeah, thank you. I just um, if anyone has anything related to the agenda. Okay. Yeah. Um, we spoke last week about moving money out of the capital into operating. Has the board considered that further to put that up for public vote? So so. Last week, the question came up, can the money that was moved from the general fund be moved, that moved from the general fund over to capital to projects, if, if that could be moved back? And it was explained that in order to be moved back, there had to be a proposition. 
one of the things that is being addressed right now is if that money is moved back, what does that actually mean? And so those are the answers that that we're, we're getting. So, for example, does it mean that we'll get? I'm just I'm just saying. For example, does it mean that we get less state aid? Does it mean that it will be able to bring teachers back or any anyone back? So those are the answers that I have requested be provided. So they'll be very clear and precise. Exactly, if there's a proposition, if we put it up and we said we're going to do it, this is what this would be the pros for it. This would be the cons for it. So to answer your question, no, we have not formally considered because we want all that information before we make a decision as a board. What, um, there's not that much time before May 21st, so how- We have to make a decision, just cut off again. I mean, just not cut off, stop the timer. We have to decide sooner because if it's, it's, a, if it's a proposition that we wanna do, mm -hmm. it has to go on the ballot. So we're in a very tight frame, right. time frame. So if it means that we have to, do a special meeting to talk and we'll do it. If not, we'll do it by we'll do it by the next meeting, by the April. I don't have the date in front of me. So you would have it during the public portion of the meeting. You would talk about that. We have deliberate yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah. Because so I want the, the keys are I want the public to be able to see exactly what that means if we did it. Okay. Okay. Um on page 19 with the administration costs are increasing, particularly in the middle school, but you act, you know, accessed admin staff. So can you speak to that increase in the administrative course? Dr. Talbot, Ms. Bawasi? Yes, that was just, just page 19 is the middle school. This is when I when I was doing my presentation, I was I said there were instances where there were people who were paid from the grant that were brought to the general fund. There was an administrator who was paid from the grant and is being brought back to the general fund. That so, was the amount you're seeing there. So we're not we're not losing someone. They're just they're they're being paid back to the general fund. Okay. On page 15, where you have the improvements to remove the warrior logo. Um, for example, like $80,000 for the high school bleachers. Why would it be a full replacement and not resurfacing? It's just an example. Um, I'm not too sure if they look to see if it could be just be resurfaced or if they had to, I don't think they're replacing the, the bleachers that they. I think it says replacement, I, page 15. I'm... Go, go ahead, Ms. Boatsy. I have to look back at my data, but it's it replacing bleaches will cost more than eighty one thousand dollars. Yeah, and I think it's just probably resurfacing. Maybe the the language is is wrong. Maybe it wouldn't it shouldn't be because when you think about replacing, you think about pulling all the bleaches out and putting new bleaches in, and that would be more than eighty thousand dollars. Why okay, so bleaches that it doesn't say warrior on the some of the some of the some of them do. Um. Did you, so are we out of the lawsuit for the warrior name? No, we're still in the lawsuit, okay. but everyone that has been in the lawsuit, they have not been successful. Right. So we, we, we have it capped and yeah, we're I going know. forward I, to see what yeah. happens. Um, the leaders of tomorrow, is that continuing? Dr. Talbot or Ms. Boatsy? Dr. Lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the present leaders of tomorrow is finishing its uh, third year. It was a three-year grant, and it is over um, this year. Um, we yeah, are, more however, um, applying for the next iteration of, of uh, a new grant for the after-school programs. She said that the leaders of tomorrow is not continuing. No, no, she said no, no. She no. Just speak That's closer to the mic. I don't. Just put you guys speak more to the mic. Bring bring closer. I'm sorry I, that you didn't hear. Um, what I said was uh, the leaders of tomorrow is a three year grant that we received, which will end um, this year. However, the new iteration of the grant, the RFP, is out now, and this district will be applying for it. And when would you get that grant? Would it be for September? I don't know when uh, the date, they usually do not tell us what the date of the award is, but I can also tell you that this district just won a $2 million grant that will allow us to this summer provide 
the leaders of tomorrow type experiences that our children have been used to. Um, in the four, in Northeast, Northwest, uh, Park Avenue and the middle school, we will be running this success program that we have run for the last two years. Um, in addition, um, we will be running the uh, a sports camp and also the um, uh, fine and performing arts uh, program that we ran last year. Um, as Ms. Boazzi mentioned, um, the only downside of the grant that we won is that it's a matching grant. Um, so we do have to make sure that um, for the amount of money that we spend, that the district's general fund also provides the same amount of money to it. Okay, so then, okay, so if we have to match the grant, then it's not in the 2024-2025 budget, right? Y yes, it is. It is in the 2024-2025 yes. budget. So you're assuming you're going to get the grant. No, we won the grant. We are the district on Long Island that won the recall grant. I'm sorry, the grant that you're applying for for the Leaders of Tomorrow. The Leaders of Tomorrow Empire grant is now ending the three-year cycle. Right. And the RFP is out. And okay. now we are applying for the new three-year cycle. So that's not in next year's budget, right? The matching Correct. of that grant. No. That's not. So I think that no, that would have been the Leaders of Tomorrow was never in our, our budget. But I think I think we just kind of pause. I think what, and please correct me. I think what Megan is referring to was that when the question came up before about, I think it was the summer school and grants, and with when Miss Bawatsi said that, in our budget we have to have matching funds from the grant. So I think she's referring to so for leaders of tomorrow, if for the summer program we have to have matching funds, then how come we don't have in the grant to have matching funds for a future grant? Is, is that, that's what you're yes. referring to? Okay. Thank you. So there are two very different grants. One's called RECOV, okay. and the other uh, was highly competitive. And the other was the Leaders of Tomorrow. That's the Empire Grant from the Family, uh, from the Office of Family and Children's Services. Two very different grants. But does, but does, but do in, in our budget, the question is in our budget, do we have to match the funds it, like for the summer program, we were matching the funds. Do we have to do it for this potential grant that we're hoping to get to continue a similar program like the Leaders of Tomorrow? No, That's the, the question. Empire Grant is not a matching grant. The recall that we won is a matching grant. And Leaders of Tomorrow is or is not in for next year? The Leaders of Tomorrow is expiring. Okay, it's but, not in next year's budget, right? Correct. Okay, so I think that that would have been very transparent, talk about transparency, to tell the parents of the community that that program is ending. Because but, parents rely on that because we don't finish work at 2.30 in the afternoon. So thank you for clarifying that that's out. Um, I did not understand the transportation discussion and how we were going to... Um, how you were going to change the time of start time for schools we're, to we're not we're, we're not just we're not we're not changing the, the discussion was that there is a discussion that's occurring with the building administrators to see to see if there could be different times so there would be no changing of school times nothing like that it's only in discussion at this point in time so that's where it's at. So if there was any indication that there would be changes in school start of school times, there'll be ample notification. So it's just being looked at to see if, hypothetically, if there was a change in time, would it be any savings in transportation? That That's all that's being looked at. Nothing has been decided. Okay, I understand that nothing's been decided, but that is also something that directly impacts our students and parents right. and the buses are pretty crowded as is, so that is concerning to me. Um, so I hope that you continue to talk about that in front of the community and not just an executive session. No, that's not, that was not executive session conversation. Okay. That, that was a conversation that is occurring with the administration. It, it, it's, not, it's not time yet. Okay. Um, there was discussion about the BOCES. I'm just curious because you talked about if we send 117 kids, we're paying for 130. Did that policy change or has that always been 
the way that BOCES functions and we pay for BOCES and this year we just missed the boat and we didn't budget properly. So um, Dr. Talbot or Ms. Bawasi, I'm not too sure when that process changed. The rolling average, that's what I talked about, has always been in place. Um, when the 2002-03 budget was being developed, which is something that we typically check. I don't know whether that was the information that was received at that time. So um, I didn't put together that budget. But um, so when we subsequently realized what was happening, that's why we decided to contact BOCES to make sure that going forward, we check on the rolling average when we are doing the budget so that we align the budget with the number of students that they potentially will be charging us. Okay. Okay, so the policy didn't change, right, from BOCES? We just didn't, okay, we didn't plan properly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Akia Wolf, 100 Court Drive, Melville. A um, couple of different things. One, um, thank you for the parent who brought up the uh, topic of one-to-one -one aids um, because that is extremely important for our students and making sure that it is that they have the um, appropriate supports. I wanted to also make sure that it is that in the accessing of um, TAs for our special education classes that all of the all of the classes that have that are mandated to have TAs we want to make sure that that is still going to be the case. Um, a, even though it is that we understand that accessing had to happen, um, that is a that is an extra burden again on our teachers who are going to be um, dealing with increased class sizes. And we also want to make sure that it is that the students have the supports in the classroom that are mandated by um, the program and their IEPs. The other piece, uh, going back to what it is that was just brought up, was the transportation piece. Oh, <laughs> um, as it relates to transportation, transportation obviously affects the community, but it also impacts teachers. Mm -hmm. The last three years, two different times, our school there have been school buildings that had their times change. That impacted parents. That impacted my members in terms of childcare and what it is that their responsibilities were. So if there's going to be any type of change in which there is going to be a school hours change, I'm hoping that this is not something that's going to be happening at number one, um, the 11th hour, and number two, that it's going to um, be happening without taking into consideration what is actually allowable for um, a school change to take place. No more than 10 minutes, I believe, is what that is supposed to be. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that that is that those things are being considered as we move forward um, in just part one of what it is that I have to say this evening. All right. So at this point in time, it's the end of comments regarding agenda items. We're going to go to the agenda. We will have you come back afterwards to, to ask your questions. So you two will be the first two that will come back up. All right. So... At this point in time, can I have a motion to approve agenda item 2A, 1, and 2, please? So moved. Second. Leslie Kretz is first. Dave Hell is second. Any questions regarding these items? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Can, can I have a motion to amend the agenda? to add agenda item 2C1, which is the resolution for the hiring of a forensic auditor. Okay. Can I have a motion first, please? So move. Second. Jeanette Santos is first. Dave Heller is second. All those in favor of amending the agenda? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Can I have a motion? to approve agenda item 2C1, please. So moved. Leslie Kretz is first. I need a second. second. Jeanette Santos is second. So I'm gonna read the resolution again. Whereas each member 
of the Board of Education is obligated to maintain fiscal oversight, accountability, and exercise fiduciary responsibilities to the district, and whereas the Board of Education determines that in carrying out these obligations, it would be prudent to identify past accounting and financial actions of the district and to determine whether any inappropriate financial actions have taken place, and whereas the board believes that a forensic audit will assist in providing data to develop long-term and short-term financial plans, plans, excuse me, which accurately take into account income sources and projected expenses and will provide accurate and reliable financial information recommendations on the system of internal controls in the district and provide guidance on corrective actions to restore fiscal stability to the district. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby appoints EFPR group to conduct a forensic audit um, effective March 18th, 2024, as described above, and authorizes the board president to sign a contract with said accounting firm outlining the terms and conditions of their engagement subject to review by council and the, at a cost not to exceed 18,500. Can I have a vote for that resolution, please? Motion Double. to approve. Second. Yes. <laughs> All those in favor, aye, sir. Aye. Motion carries 5-0. Can I have a motion for agenda items 2E1 through, excuse me, 2E1 through 3, please? Can I have a motion for agenda items 2E1 through 2E3, please? Okay. Dave Heller is first. Second. Jeanette Santos is second. And they, the resolution is out that way, correct? Okay. So just a question, legal. So in terms of the names, we'll, we'll get the names on the resolutions, would be in the minutes and- Correct. Be, okay. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Juan, is that a yes or a no? That is a no. So four yes and one no. Right. Can I have a motion for agenda item 3A1, please? Leslie Kretz is first. Second. Jeanette Santos is second. Any questions regarding this agenda item? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, motion carries 5 0. Can I have a motion for agenda item 2B1 and 2, please? So moved. Jeanette Santos is first. Second. Leslie Kretz is second. Any questions regarding these two agenda items? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 5 0. Can I have a motion for agenda item 2C1A through F? Second. Leslie Kretz is first. Second. Jeanette Santos, second. Legal, all the contracts have been reviewed. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. Can I have a motion for agenda items 2C2 to 2C5, please? Wait, I I'm sorry. Are we on three? I'm sorry, three. Sorry. Okay, that's why. I'm three. Right. Sorry. Three C two two C. Yes. So moved. Second. Jeanette Santos is first. Leslie Kretz is second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries five zero. Legal. I made a mistake for the last one. I was saying two C one A through F. Do I need? I need to redo that one again. Correct. It's supposed to be three C. I just would like to make a motion to amend that it is actually 3C1A through 3C1F. Can I make a motion to amend that that's what we voted on? I'm making a friendly amendment to state that it's 3C1 through 3C1F. So moved. All right, so moved. No. Jeanette Santos, can I have a second? Second, yes. Leslie Kretz, do I need to revote again? Just revote again? Yes. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye, so it carries 5-0. Thank you. 
We have a motion to approve agenda item 3D1, please. 3D1. We have a motion to approve agenda item 3D1, please. Motion to approve. Juan Leon first, Leslie Kretz second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 5 0. All right. You have a motion for agenda item 3E1, please. Leslie Kretz is first. Second. Jeanette Santos is second. Any questions regarding this item? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. Can I have a motion for agenda item 3F1, please? So moved. Jeanette Santos is first. Second. Leslie Kretz is second. Any questions regarding this agenda item? All right. Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. So now we can, the two people that were up for community input, the gentleman and the gentleman. lady. So now we're taking, I'll take community input regarding non-agent items as well as agent items. So the, the gentleman and the lady were, will be the first and second. If you don't mind, Nakia. Yeah, no, I mean, you can stay behind them, but th those, those two, they were the last two that were online. So if they could just, are you going to have those two go first? Yeah, just go behind the gentleman. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name, my name is Michelle Badeau, and I'm here because I'm a parent, and I'm very concerned about my daughter and everybody else here. I wanted to know why are you taking the teachers away from the school district? Dr. Talbert? Good evening, Ms. Bedo. Um, teacher positions are being abolished because the district is experiencing an operational deficit of $3.6 million. Ms. Talbot, the school district cannot run without teachers, without staff, without monitors, and everyone else that is part of the school district. What is Amityville going to be? If you're taking away the staff, who decided that that was a good idea? We as we as a board and with recommendation, we as a board of education with recommendation from central administration, in order to work on the budget, that was one thing that we had to look at. That there is really nothing else to look at unless we stop getting Excuse other me. people. So I'm it was sorry. something that we looked at, and we're my at the child is getting an education. People who make up the professional people in the school district, you can't take the teachers away. And the monitors, the security, lunch people, that can't be done. I think it needs to be revamped and come back again because it cannot happen. The school needs teachers, everyone else that makes it up in this Amityville school district. How is my daughter going to have an opportunity for education and every, all these other parents? You have an education. Where does that leave them? Their morale is going to go down? Do they, you think they want to go to school if they're hearing that their teachers are going to be fired? I mean, honestly, we're not going on feeling here. We're talking about protocol. Protocol, you don't start with the teachers. You have to start somewhere else. The budget is the problem. And you're not starting with the teachers. That doesn't work. Because then we're going to have a shortage. And is my daughter and everyone else here, their child is not going to learn anything. Because it's going to be overcrowding. And you know what else happens. It just trendles down to a downfall. So we need to come up with a citizens committee board because that way we'll know and we'll be involved in what's going on with our kids. I don't know if you have any kids going to Amityville. I do. You do? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
this is not based on feeling. This is based on protocol. And I think the protocol needs to go back to the uh, board meeting and they need to revamp something else. Not teachers. We need to start somewhere else. If you're starting with um, the forensic auditor, you're starting there, but you had already made your decision based on let's get rid of the teachers. Let's get rid of the staff. That doesn't work. Because now all of the kids, is, they're coming up. I saw the last meeting. I wasn't here, but I watched it online. All of these kids are worried. You think they're going to do well if they're in school? Anybody. Do you think any of your kids will do well if you had kids in Amityville? Does so, it matter? So thank you. Thank you for your comments. I'm going to go to the next person. We need to remedy the situation. That's for sure. Uh, my name is Ken Egan, uh, 63 Forest Place. Um, I'm a proud parent of a fifth grader at the school, and he loves it. He's doing great. I think watching these 10 really incredible students um, and you guys talk about what they did over the course of their years, I think it's really incredible. All the extracurriculars, all the extra clubs, all those things, and they're so important because my son's going into sixth grade. You know, he's plays in the band. I think he'll be a two-sport athlete at the school. I think he, he's still involved in this computer program. Like, there's a lot of good things happening. Um, but it does make me nervous, the trajectory. And, you know, we're putting a lot of faith in a um, uh, somebody to do some forensic work on the budget. I think we're putting, like, a lot of energy into that when they're just going to show us what the shortfalls were. But maybe just the whole group needs to start rolling in the same direction, um, maybe in some other areas. But will the forensic um, uh, researcher look into BOCES specifically since they're an off-campus type Thing. Will they still have the same access looking at what those costs are and how those get, you know, spread out? I mean, so, I'm sure they will, but I'm just hoping that that'll be part of your conversation with them. So I will any... just ask legal just to make a note of that. Okay. Um, another question I had asked a couple of weeks ago, I, I didn't get to come to the last meeting. I was uh, getting over the flu. Um, this, the school district receives money from the state and they've been getting money from the state from COVID um, extra finances. Did we ever find out what the amount is that we won't be receiving this year or, or the year coming up? I wasn't sure if that was ever I answered. I think that you, you did mention it early on about. I'm not sure if this is what you're asking, but over the course of the last three years, we received over $11 million in federal dollars through grants. Mm -hmm. Some of those grants have expired and the last one is ending this year. Okay. So the amount per year is maybe around three million, three or four around? It varies per okay. grant. All right. Okay. Uh, the last question, I wasn't sure if this was answered last week. Um, there was a 72% increase in printing and data processing compared to the 23-24 year on that first page. Um, any comment on that or why that was such a big increase? Dr. Yes. Talbot, uh, <laughs> yeah, I have the I've I have the response for that. BOCES switch the COSA that they use to charge us. If you go to another budget code, there is a deduct. Um, let me try to find the page for you. Um, Actually, I can talk to you afterwards. I don't want to waste okay, everybody's that, time. That, on. That's that, fine. I'll show you I'll exactly what yeah. it is. All there's right. a minus somewhere and there's a plus somewhere. So this is just a swap. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Nikia Wolf. Um, again, 100 Avalon Court. So I was definitely um, happy to hear that the district was going to be moving forward with a uh, forensic auditor. I do think that it will give an opportunity to provide some clarity in terms of um, where is it that we went wrong. Um, we need someone who can pinpoint um, those areas and then have a report go out to the community as to exactly what happened instead of hearing generalities as it relates to drivers. Um, articulating what those drivers are, that's not necessarily as transparent as exactly what caused those drivers to be. So what exactly were those expenditures and were those expenditures even necessary? Um, and going back to what it is that we were hearing before as a, as, a, as a union, I think that there was a little bit of confusion. And some of that was brought up tonight. 
Um, some of that confusion had to do with when it was that the that the district or where it is that the that central office or what, what it is that the board knew when they knew in terms of where we were. Um, and so I, I think that is one of those things that is resulting in a lack of trust. So I, I did kind, kind of find some things a little bit um, confusing. So here's what it is that I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to come to terms with. One of the things is that the district said that this was all a surprise, right? But last week, we had a board member who was breaking down items along with um, Ms. Bawatsi. Um, and they asked extremely poignant questions. And so to me, I'm wondering if that, that questioning strategy is something that is standard. Is that something that typically happens whenever it is that they receive information? If that questioning standard is, is practiced all the time, then how, where was that when it is that we were bleeding money? For an example, um, we talked about one of the drivers being the health benefits. And outside of that 4% delta, where it is that we budgeted for 10 and we actually paid 14, um, that's, that wasn't something that would have resulted in over the million dollars that we saw. Uh, more, a little bit more transparency would have been the fact that what I had asked for was exactly how many people were paid under the grant, right? How many people were paid by grant dollars? And what did those grant dollars cover? Did it cover their salary? Did it cover their benefits? And if the grant did not cover their salary and their benefits, then where did their benefits come from? And if their benefits came from the general budget, then why was there no oversight? Because the funding stream that it is that you have from the grant was a lot larger than what it is that you allocate in your budget for insurance. So why were we continuing to hire knowing that we didn't have those that have that dollar amount? So those are some of the things that are extremely important. Um, and I would also like to say that in, in disclosing information about the teachers who are going to leave, I think that um, they should be entitled to privacy. But I do think that, that the community has a right to know exactly what buildings they were accessed from and how many in each building. I don't think that the names of those individuals are necessary. The names of those individuals are going to be on a Pell list so that the district, when they are in a position to hire, they can bring those individuals back. So putting their names in public is not something else that it is that they would need to endure. I just want to address that. Also, there's, there's something else to consider. If somebody's looking for a job and they say we were, we were accessed and HR says, show me the resolution where you were accessed and there's no name, that could work against them as they may think they were terminated. Um, I want to bring up about on page 64, the energy performance contract is going up by like $436,000. June 7th, 2023, a resolution that you approved I'll, I'll go down. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the district hereby terminates the agreement with Honeywell in accordance with Section 911, you know, with the 30 days thing. You terminated this on June 7th. We just we just budgeted for it and then over-budgeted for it. That's like a million dollars right there. Does nobody know about that? Nobody knows that you terminated that? That's concerning. That's a million dollars. Will you be looking into that? Okay. Um, the other thing is, you know, we, we're not $3.6 million in the hole because we lost COVID money. It's because money, that money was used to hire people, which it shouldn't have been used to hire people because it's not sustainable. Community members have been saying that over three years. The money, they overspent the budget. They overspent the budget. It's not because they lost it. There's a big difference. The last thing, you know, uh, you made a comment that the superintendent made these recommendations for cuts, right, for the excessing. I had asked at a previous meeting if you considered any, you know, the instruct um, considered activities or anything else because it goes hand in hand. You need the teachers to run those those things. This is why you spent twenty three thousand dollars of my tax dollars for a superintendent search firm. This is why hiring a, the right superintendent is critical. The superintendent made these recommendations to you. Your educational leader, perhaps, if we had somebody a little bit more experienced. They might have had alternatives for you. So, Ms. Canestro, 
Um, you're talking about one of the employees, so I'm going to stop you there. And they are yes, an official. They are an official. We, they are up for scrutiny. So legal, am I wrong? Because we're talking about a personnel, which is a superintendent. And so if, so if I'm wrong, just please correct me. So just just going to need the mic. The super is considered to be the um, kind of the CEO of the organization, so is subject to okay. criticism in the same manner as, you know, the Board of Education. Okay, I apologize. Thank you. I knew that. I okay, so I just want to say that, you know, when the community urged you to hire a superintendent, that it was a great opportunity for the entire district and that it was really a way to change things and change the culture. And you know, you you had somebody come, their only experience came from one school district. It happened to have been a failing school district that had a fiscal monitor. We're probably looking at another fiscal monitor. I think we deserve a fiscal monitor at this point. You know, this it, you, you seem to not be able to self-govern or budget correctly. We could really use that. So to this community, remember, this is our board of education. These are our schools, these are our tax dollars, these are our students. We have the say here, they work for us, not the other way around and we have the ability to change it. I have a question. One of your board members cursed at me. What do you intend to do about it? I'm, I'm going to address it. It I needs to be addressed. I will. Okay? Because he has no business talking to anybody like that. I will address it. He needs to apologize. That's what he needs to do. It will be addressed. I want it in writing. <laughs> because Elmont has a situation where one of their members cursed and the community got together and they want them removed. Understood. Okay? Yes. So something better be done. Okay. Hi, my name is Ada Fanning Holmes. I'm a freshman at the high school. Um, something I'm concerned about is the increase in class sizes next year. How do you plan to support the remaining teachers who will be dealing with class sizes of around 30 kids? And how do you plan on helping the students whose grades may struggle after the increase of class sizes because it will be difficult to learn in a class that large? Dr. Talbot. Good evening to our student scholar. Thank you for sharing your concerns. We will be monitoring classroom sizes next year. We do not anticipate that your classes will be over 30 students in the high school. We anticipate that they will be lower. If that does happen, we will certainly make the necessary changes that are required. Okay. I just wanna say that I already received tutoring for some classes, but it would be unfair to ask the families to pay for extra private tutoring when you should be um, providing our students with a quality education because that's your job. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'll be quick. Um, just do me a favor, just lift the mic Debbie. closer because I don't think okay. outside could hear you. Debbie McClellan. Um, I didn't realize that there was a, a representative from the... Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize that you had somebody from the law firm here and I don't know if you answered Megan's question directly, but that resolution from two weeks ago when all the teachers were abolished, this is what it is. How does this, as you said, was approved by the attorney. You said the attorney put this in front of you. How is this something that'll stand up? Can somebody challenge this resolution? So, the the the, res the resolution and, and please correct me I'm not I don't think the attorneys did the, that resolution you said they did and I was wrong on that so I thought I thought I I I, I was wrong I admit when I'm wrong but right. you were being questioned so the right? attorneys you don't did remember do the one regarding the teachers so hold on a second I'm I'm just go no this resolution is blank completely blank can can you just pass it over to to legal here please thank you now we know with the new york state school boards association you have so much guidance on this you should use it you want to pay the dues um 
a formal resolution must be adopted, identifying the position to be abolished by tenure area. It's where's New York State School Board logo. And then I have a couple more, but you don't need to see them. So I think that could could your action be overturned in court because that resolution is blank? That's how you read it. That's exactly what the community heard. And it could be challenged. If I was a teacher, I'd challenge it. Um, the grants, I asked you before about the district's philosophy on grants. We've had this conversation a couple of times. If you're gonna take a grant, for example, to lower class size and you have good results with the students, why would you take that away from the students if the grant runs out? So we, I did ask about this and I asked for the district's philosophy and everybody was shaking their head. Um, the grant that you're losing, the, the federal money funds, the districts have already thought ahead and incorporated those teachers into their budgets. So they're not losing anybody, they're in the budget. Um, I just, it's so sad when parents and students, because we're talking about a lot of finances, but they want to talk about teachers. And I think we need to get back to how do we make that child whole in the classroom? Um, so it's very nice for us to have all these great conversations about money, but when the parents go home, they don't care anymore about all of these misdoings. Um, so we really need to get away from that. And the work sessions are when we should hear you think. You have to admit that. I mean, can you, um, can you say that? The work session, we should let the community hear us think. Not what you were, you stepped away before, Ms. Johnson. And Ms. Santos said, we talked about it tonight, the resolution for the forensic audit. When did you talk about it? Tonight. What are you saying to the community? You're saying, none of your business. That's what it sounds like. I'm sorry, but kids need to be educated. And you guys, I'm not a combative person. I never was. But this is really you got to just drop it and say, where can we go back to the drawing board and start over? The kids deserve it. It can be done. My name is Noah Bullard. Uh, so two questions I want to ask real quick. Uh, the first question is regarding the new RFP, Dr. Lang. So how much money is Amityville applying for that? I know it's coming out. I know that the funds won't be distributed to some around, somewhere around September. I'm sorry, I don't know because I haven't, I have not finished um, writing the grant. I, oh. I, I, as soon as I do, I can share that. Okay, and do we know are we, it's gonna be the same thing towards as leaders tomorrow? It's gonna be any new activities? Or are there gonna be any outside vendors that are added into this RFP or when you write it, this grant process? I don't know until I, I until I get further into it, but okay. as soon as I do, I will be happy to share it with everybody. Okay. And the second question, I guess it's either Dr. Talbot or Ms. Johnson. Uh, regarding the outside auditor, how far is this person going to go back? Is it just going to go back for last year? Or are we talking about going back to maybe 2005? Because I realized this problem did not start just now underneath Dr. Talbot. So how far are we going back? So, so I think the community needs to understand. So right now, that's part of what they're going to work on. But right now, it's only going to go back, I believe, 22, 23. So if the forensic auditor, when they're doing it, if they find that it, they need to go deeper, then they'll let us know because then that would cost more money. So right now, the time frame is only for the 20. Right, so so we'll, we'll, we'll get the... Because, well, because I'm not so it, it may it may go go make up it may go back further. I, I would hope that the board would consider it going back further. I think the community needs to see a real overview because I think some community members are just thinking that it just started now. Some of us have lived here all of our lives and saw different uh, superintendents come in and saw them leave. So I think we just need a clear overview exactly 
when this happened, how it happened, and then what are we going to do going forward in terms of making sure that we never get into this uh, situation again. And then finally, I want to thank the uh, the school district. Uh, my daughter was number seven, and so I am proud of her. Thank you uh, for this opportunity and allowing her to be able to come here. Thank you. All right, any other community input? All right, seeing none, can I have a motion to adjourn the meeting at 1019? So moved. Um, Leslie Kretz is first, do I have a second? Jeanette Santos is second, all those in favor? I uh, motion carries 5-0. Thank you for coming out.